قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We continue with this theme that we had commenced a few weeks ago where we speak of life lessons and experiences from the Quran al-Kareem for Muslims living in current times. We spoke about how do you react when things are going good for you. We also spoke about in our previous discussion what to do when you are tested with regards to your faith, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in his wisdom, tests you by causing some financial loss or tests you by causing some sicknesses within your health or tests you by taking away some of your possessions in whichever way Allah desires best. And we spoke about enduring that test with patience. And we also spoke about some of the, or rather we had given reference to some ayats of the Quran al-Kareem. And we said that we should, on those occasions, reflect on these verses of the Quran because the Quran is our guide. It is the Qur'an through which we find comfort, solace, peace and tranquility. And we can do so by reciting the Qur'an al-Kareem and also by reflecting on those ayats of the Qur'an that have a direct impact on the experiences that we experience. We continue with this broad theme of life lessons from the Quran. Today I would like to, in the first session, talk about what to do when you see yourself acting on shaitan's desires. We know that shaitan, the accursed, has made a promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he was expelled from the arena of paradise, that he is going to lead mankind astray because it was our spiritual father and our father Adam alayhi salatu was salam, whom in shaitan's view was the reason for him to be expelled. He made this promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will lead mankind astray. So what do you and I do when we see ourselves acting on shaitan's desires? Allah says in the Quran, وَإِمَّا يَنْزَغَنَّكَ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ نَزْغٌ فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ إِنَّهُ سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ This is an ayah, an ayah of Surah Al-A'raf, ayah number 200. Wherein Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very beautifully advises us. وَإِمَّا يَنْزَغَنَّكَ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ نَزْغٌ فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ إِنَّهُ سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ Should a stroke from shaitan strike you? وَإِمَّا يَنْزَغَنَّكَ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ Should a stroke from shaitan strike you? Should shaitan try to attempt to lead you astray by whispering something in your ears or by leading you to follow his desires. Should a stroke from shaitan strike you, what should you do? Fasta'ith billah. Seek refuge with Allah. 
Allah also says to comfort us that when you see this, the first thing that you should do is seek protection in Allah, seek refuge with Allah, because you on your own do not have the ability to fight the desires of shaitan. It is only the protection of Allah that will assist you in being protected from the desires of shaitan. So Allah says, should a stroke from shaitan strike you, seek refuge with Allah. Then Allah says to comfort us, innahu samiun alim, you should know, surely he, Allah, is all hearing and all knowing. That when you seek the protection of Allah, when you seek the refuge of Allah, know that Allah is hearing. That Allah has heard you. And Allah is all knowing. He knows what is happening. You only need to turn to Allah. For Allah will hear you and Allah will grant you that protection. Allah also says in another ayah of the Quran Kareem. And these are the ayats of the Quran that we should be reflecting on when we are faced with these types of challenges from the desires of shaitan. And I promise you, my beloved, that when you do so, when you follow these guidance of the Quran, you will most certainly find solace, comfort, and refuge from the desires of shaitan. Allah also says in another ayah, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا إِذَا مَسَّهُمْ طَائِفٌ مِّنَ الشَّيْطَانِ تَذَكَّرُوا فَإِذَا هُمْ مُبْصِرُونَ Surah A'raf, the next ayah. Surely, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا Surely, when the God-fearing, surely when those who have taqwa, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا إِذَا مَسَّهُمُ الشَّيْطَانِ Attached. By any instigation from shaitan. Subhanallah, my beloved friends. Look at the compassion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at the kindness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the one hand, shaitan made this promise to Allah that he is going to lead us astray. Allah had accepted that request of shaitan, accepted that prayer of shaitan. But Allah had turned to his beloved creation, you and I. And he gives us this guidance. That when shaitan strikes you with any instigation, seek my protection. I am going to be your protector. And know that I am hearing your seeking of protection from me. And I also know what is happening. Then Allah goes on further by saying, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا because when you turn to Allah and ask Allah for his protection, you are already regarded as one who is God-fearing. You are already regarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the one who is conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore Allah says, when you do so, when you are instigated by shaitan and you turn towards me, Surely when the God-fearing, when you, the one who has become conscious of my power, when the God-fearing are touched by any instigation from shaitan, they become conscious of Allah. And at once they discern the reality, Allah says. In order to stop somebody from controlling your life, you must understand how that person operates. It's a common life experience. You are in a situation and you experience that somebody wants to control your life. You need to know how, what is the modus operandi of this person? How is he going to control my life? So in order to stop someone, and in this case shaitan, from controlling your life, you need to understand how that person, and in this case, shaitan, operates. 
I will discuss this in detail when we take our lessons or our discussions. At a later stage, I will discuss an amazing topic inside Shaitan's mind. And as we go along, inshallah, in this discussion of ours, we will have one session where we will dedicate to a caption inside Shaitan's mind. But for now, if he later on in the discussion, but not right now, I would like to give you a behind the scenes view of Shaitan's operation. Shaitan knows that he can't make a Muslim commit a major sin at will. At will, any Muslim who has an iota of faith and iman and who is cognizant of the concept of accountability on the day of Qiyamah, that we will be called up to answer for our deeds. It is not easy for shaitan to instigate such a person to commit a major sin. So what does he do? He starts by telling us to commit smaller sins. And by committing smaller sins, the effect of smaller sins is our resistance becomes weak. Stay tuned. Inshallah, after the break, we will continue with this discussion what to do when we are instigated by shaitan to fall into the traps that he places before us. طرق نجاتي قرآني نبط حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي Before the break, we were discussing how shaitan will operate. We also said that a Muslim who has an ayatah of iman, who understands the concept of accountability that we will be questioned with regards to our deeds on the day of Qiyamah, and our deeds have a direct impact and consequences in our life in this world and in the year after. Such a person who is cognizant of this, shaitan also knows that he cannot make such a person commit major sins at will. So what he does, he starts by telling us, by instigating us to commit smaller sins. Until our resistance to these sins drops. Committing smaller sins results in our resistance to shaitan becoming weak. And when he has realized that our resistance has become weak, then he tells us to commit a bigger sin. Which in fact looks like a small sin at the time. Shaitan continues this until we start committing major sins. Shaitan works by causing us to doubt our beliefs and makes us either to become negligent or too overzealous about our religion, depending on what's easier for him. And this is how he operates. If you are or have begun acting on his desires, this is what he will do. What should we be doing? Let's take an example. I make a commitment that I will start praying in the mosque five times a day after I finish my exams. Or even worse, after I come back from my summer vacation. Now, this is, we are entering the December vacation, and this is one of the plots that shaitan uses, procrastination. Not to let us do the good deeds that we are wanting to do at this moment, but rather delay it. So what we say, you know what, I will start praying in the mosque five times a day, after I finish my exams. Or even worse, after I come back from my summer vacation, I will start praying five times a day. 
He will also try to instigate you by saying, I can afford to miss Fajr in the mosque today. I went yesterday, so today I can afford to miss the Fajr prayer. I'll go tomorrow. This is something that happens that morning when you just get up. My beloved friends, and with experience I'm telling you this, to try this. The morning when you get up from your sleep, recite Ayatul Kursi. And read, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-ali al And recite Ayatul Kursi. You will find that the recital of La hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-ali al And the recital of Ayatul Kursi has a tremendous boost of energy to do good. And this will help you when you are feeling that laziness of going to the masjid or getting up for Fajr Salah. Another plot that shaitan plays, I will pray right after this TV program finishes. So you just chose a bunch of actors over Allah. Ponder. You are watching that famous or your favorite program. And it's time for salah. And you say, I will pray right after this TV program finishes. What you have actually done in your mind, you're saying, I will pray my salah, I'll just delay it a little bit. But you have actually chose a bunch of actors over Allah. Another ploy that shaitan uses, and he will tell you, this isn't a lie. It won't hurt anyone. It's only a joke. I'll just do it this one time only. Again, I could have gone on giving many such examples, but I think you get the point by now. That these are the small whispers and instigations of shaitan. So now if you find yourself as a pawn in shaitan's game, if you find yourself as a pawn in shaitan's game, what are you to do? Well, the answer to that question is in the verse quoted in the beginning. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا إِذَا مَسَّهُمْ طَائِفٌ مِّنَ الشَّيْطَانِ تَذَكَّرُوا فَإِذَا هُمْ مُبْصِرُونَ Surely, when the God-fearing are touched by any instigation from shaitan, they become conscious of Allah. تَذَكَّرُوا they become conscious of Allah at once and they discern the reality. The reality that this is an instigation of shaitan. He's instigating me with these small acts, which in my mind may not really be a sin. But in reality, it will weaken my resistance against shaitan. And when you are experiencing this, what did Allah say? فَاسْتَعِثْ بِاللَّهِ Seek refuge with Allah. إِنَّهُ هُوَ السَّمِيُّ الْعَلِيمُ When you get that feeling, that tinge, that push from shaitan telling you to do something wrong that seems fun or easy at that time, but deep inside you know it's wrong for you to do, the first thing you must do is Go straight to the part of the house where you keep the Qur'an. Or go to the masjid, get hold of the copy of the Qur'an, and start reciting the Qur'an as much as you can, until you are able to exert some sort of control over the desires created by shaitan. Let me give you a tip of a lifetime. One way in which you can seek refuge with Allah from shaitan is by reciting the last two chapters of the Noble Qur'an, namely Surah Al-Falaq and Surah An-Nas. Shaitan works in mysterious ways, and so to combat him, we must do what Allah says in plenty of places in the Qur'an, and that is to seek refuge with Allah by remembering Allah. That is by doing the dhikr of Allah, and one of the best way of doing the dhikr is by reciting the Qur'an 
and praying and fasting voluntarily. Again, as we come to the end of this section, I would like you to reflect on the ayah that we have commenced this discussion with and reflect on the last two chapters of the Quran, Surah Falaq and Surah Nas, in the fashion that Allah has guided us and has given us this protection. Recite Qul A'udhu Bi Rabbil Falaq. Recite Qul A'udhu Bi Rabbil Nas. Recite La Hawla Wa La Quwata Illa Billahi Al Ali Al Azim. Ayat Al Kursi. And the ayah that we have read in the beginning. I will leave you again today with the recital of these ayats and ponder and reflect on them. This indeed will be an amazing seal and protection for you from the instigations of shaitan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الفلق من شر ما خلق ومن شر غاسق إذا وقب ومن شر النفاثات في العقد ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الناس ملك الناس إله الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري